Well, I'm excited about this weekend at Crossroads. We get to continue our series on the Holy Spirit. So I want you to turn with me, if you would, and go to Romans chapter 8, starting with verse number 1. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 1. Turn to somebody while you're going there and say, you look fantastic, by the way. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, let me say that again. Therefore, (laughs) there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, everybody say law of the Spirit. Who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh... God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires but those who live in accordance with the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. I want to talk to you this weekend about moving from the realm of the flesh to the realm of the spirit. The series, Not Alone, is an in-depth study on the Holy Spirit, and I love talking about the Holy Spirit, and I always have. And we're going in-depth as we, week by week, examine the person and the purpose and the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus left his disciples, and he went to be with his Father, he returned to be with his Father, he said something very interesting. I taught on this last, last week. If you missed that mes- message, you can check, get it online. Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I, th- I, th- I find that so endearing. Here he is. He's getting ready to go back to heaven. He's like, don't worry, guys. I got you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Actually, a double negative. I will never, ever leave you. I will never, ever forsake you. Literally, you might say Jesus had written this series for Crossroads Community Church 2,000 years ago. He, he's the one that came up with the title, Not Alone. Now, here's what's interesting. When, when, when we took a look last week at the Holy Spirit, we looked at the Holy Spirit's empowerment to believers through the work of grace, the empowerment, how the Holy Spirit empowers us through the work of grace. But today we're going to look at how the Holy Spirit equips us to overcome the flesh. Jesus knew, here's what Jesus knew, church. He knew that our greatest battle would not be from outside, but he knew that our greatest battle would be within. He just had an understanding of that. He knew it would be our flesh. And so Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us the Holy Spirit, and Paul taught this in Romans uh, chapter 8, verse 1 through 8. He taught us about the law of the Spirit being greater than the law of the flesh. Now, here's what we're going to talk about over the next few moments. There are four enemies to the Spirit. There are four, there are four enemies to our flesh that operate inside of us that uh that are very real in our lives and as i'm going to mention them to them you'll say yes exactly right away number one is chaos everybody say chaos chaos is disorder the second one is heaviness everybody say heaviness heaviness is uh would be in today's vernacular it would be depression the third one that we want to uh, take a look at is the, the, the word that, that, that I think is very, very important for us to, to understand, and that is uh, anxiety. 
How many know what anxiety is? How many have ever experienced anxiety? The fourth is empty. Everybody say empty. And empty is like a sense of emptiness. It's like I'm here, but my tank is low, and I'm just empty. So these are four, thi- these are four things that are opposite of the spirit. When we walk in the spirit of God, we are walking in a different, a different arena, a different realm. Uh, Paul called it. It's a different realm. And we're in a, the realm of the spirit versus the realm of the flesh. Everybody say, we're going to walk in the realm of the spirit. All right. Let's break these down one at a time, okay? One at a time. Number one. Let's go from chaos to order. Years ago, years ago, there was this sitcom called Get Smart. Anybody remember Get Smart? Agent, Get Smart, and 99, they, they they were a part of control. Remember control? And what was their arch enemy? Chaos. And what did chaos want to do? Bring chaos on the earth. Have you ever felt like your life was just a little bit out of order? Like things you just couldn't quite get it organized or maybe even a greater way you just felt out of sync completely. Now you may just think this is a scheduling issue, but I really believe it is actually a spiritual attack inside of your flesh wanting you to not operate in the spirit of order. Now let me give you some background on that, okay? In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it describes an earth that was formless, empty, and darkness. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness, say darkness, was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now, Let me give you uh, some understanding of a couple of words. Darkness is actually uh, translated chaos. But the Bible says that God spoke, right? He said, let there be light. And light is is translated as cosmos. So here's darkness over the face of the earth, but God said, let there be light. So there is literally disorder And God begins, God just speaks light, and what happens is immediately order takes place. Now there's order. He separated and organized the world. When Adam and Eve sinned, let's just track with this for a minute. When Adam and Eve sinned, the harmony of paradise was broken, right? Chaos. Let's go to Babel. In Babel, when the people tried to get to heaven without the help of God, without the permission of God, without the blessing of God, without the favor of God. They just were rebellious and wanted to do it on their own. God looked down and said, I don't think so. And what did he do? He brought confusion or chaos to their language. And so they were not able to accomplish what they had set out to do. It was chaos. Now, how can we go from chaos to order. That's the, that's the action step I want to give you. So let's say there's some chaos in your life. Let's say there's some trouble in your life. Let's say there's some difficulty in your life. How can we go from that disorder to order? All right. Are you ready for some practical application? Okay. Action step number one. Here's what you need to do. You're going to love this. You need to have a meeting. You need to have an organizational meeting, a CEO meeting every day of your life with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. (laughs) You need to pull away from everything, all the voices, all the activities, and come together with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, I need you to direct my paths. Steps of a righteous man are what? ordered of God, not disordered of God. Holy Spirit, order my steps. So come together, have an organizational meeting, get, get, 
get an understanding. I, 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 you know, it happened at creation. The Bible says the Father, Son, Holy Spirit got together and, and planned creation. Some people think that Jesus just walked around like, what am I going to do today? Well, I'll just go to Capernaum and then tomorrow I'll go fishing. Tomorrow. No, every step that Jesus took when he was on earth was ordered. And where did it happen? Where did his order take place? Mark 135 said, Jesus did this. He said, Jesus got up very early in the morning. Somebody go, oh, phew early. There it is again. He got up very early in the morning and he went into a private place to seek direction for that day. I believe, I believe Jesus got his marching orders every day from the father. All right. So that's the, now in first Corinthians 14, 33, Paul teaches on this and he says this, I love this. He says, the Holy spirit is not the author of confusion. See, the spirit of the world is chaos. The spirit of the world is confusion. The, cons the, the spirit of the world is, ah, I don't know what to do. But that's not what we have as believers living in the kingdom, living, in, living with the Holy Spirit directing our lives. We don't have to be confused. We can know where to go, when to go, and how to go there. We can break the spirit of chaos over our lives by doing this. You know, years ago, I uh, had an opportunity to speak um, to some young men. And these young men came from very chaotic lifestyle. Do you have that picture? I just like, I'd, li I'd like everybody to see this. Here's my guys. God gave me eight weeks to spend with these guys. And they came from complete confusion and chaotic background situation. Most of them were somewhere between 12 and 16. Most of them were from third generation addictions in their homes. Most of their parents did not make it past the age of 30. Matter of fact, one day a little, a little boy, 12 year old came in. His mom and dad both OD'd on meth two days ago. And he walks in and, and we looked at him. We said, Johnny, why are you here? Why aren't you with your family? And he looked at us and he said, you are my family. I mean, it's all this, there were, all, it was just chaos in their life. And I had the privilege of teaching them for eight weeks. I, in, in one of my classes, I completely lost control of the class. And they were on their phones and they were goofing off. And I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. So I said, guys, stop right now. <laughs> they all looked at me because I hadn't talked to them like that before. I said, put your phones down. They put their phones down. And I said, I want you to go do this. And you've got five minutes to do it. And I'm going to release you in just a second to go do this. And you've got five minutes to do this. Take pencil and paper. Write down three things. Number one, what's the biggest problem of your life? Number two, how's it making you feel? Number three, what is God saying to you? Now, that was a risk. Because not all of these kids were Christians. Very few of them grew up in church. So I had no idea. But listen, even though I had no idea how they would respond to that, I knew how my heavenly father was going to respond. In five minutes, they walked back. The room was completely different. It was solemn. It was quiet. And I started taking one all the way around. Tell me, what's your problem? I'm worried. I live with my grandma. She's 88. If she dies, I'm going to be homeless. One after another, I'm worried. I don't know that I'm going to be able to go back to school. You know, all oh, boom, 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 boom. Then got to the end. What's, your, what's God saying to you? This was the big one. Was this going to work? Five minutes of being alone with the Holy Spirit was going to work. I was astonished. Changed my life. I ended up writing a book based upon my experience with these guys. One after another. God said that he loves me. God said he would take care of me. God said he would give me another set of parents. God said, I'm going to college. God said, I'm worthy. God said, one after another, after another, five minutes in the presence of the Holy Spirit changed. 
How about your life? Where are you at today? What are you going through that you need to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? Number two, let me talk about the spirit of heaviness. And let's go from the spirit of heaviness to a spirit of lightness. Isaiah 61 3 says this and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them the crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. I think the King James says the spirit of heaviness. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And what scripture is saying is that heaviness, by the way, the word for heaviness in today's vernacular is depression. God doesn't want you depressed, believer. He doesn't want you feeling that way. Do you know that in 2022, the global antidepressant drug market was valued at $17 billion dollars? Why? Because depression is epidemic in our society, in our world today. But God wants to take us from heaviness, depression, despondency, discouragement, to lightness, to a sense of hope. Now, how does that happen? Well, if you're in Christ today, we already read it. Romans 8, 1 says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because the root cause, I taught on this last week, the root cause of depression is condemnation. Every one of those guys that I taught for eight weeks was felt condemned, felt unworthy. They had not met Jesus. They had not been filled with his grace. But even in believers' lives, after we meet Jesus, after our life has changed, we still feel sometimes condemnation. That's why Paul had to write to the Romans, you are not under condemnation. So to go from a sense of heaviness or missing the mark, falling short, we have to move into a spirit of saying no condemnation. So it's really interesting because Jesus teaches this principle in Matthew chapter 11. Let me take you there for a minute. Matthew chapter 11 Verse 28, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, or all you that are heavy. Are you heavy, dude? <laughs> are you a heavy, man? How you doing? Have you ever noticed why, you know, especially at church, you come up to, how you doing? Nobody says, man, I'm heavy. Man, I'm burdened. You know, like, oh, you're burdened, okay. Ooh, ah, oh, I got enough burdens of my own, right? Come on, help me out, church, you know it's true. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, easy, and my burden is light. So here's what Jesus is saying. To go from heaviness to light is you take everything that he has that is good and walk in it and take everything that is heavy in your life and give it to him. Jesus said, cast your burdens on me for I care for you. He's saying, my yoke is easy. Why is my yoke easy? Because I've done everything that needs to be done. What did he do? When he went to the cross, he took every one of your sins, every one of your shortcomings, every one of your failures, every one of your <laughs> personality disorders and dysfunctions and everything else that is negative and he gave you his spirit. The spirit of the living God is in you. And he gave that to you. And he said, now it's easy. So take what is easy and give what has failed, which is your sins and your ways and your actions and, and quit carrying them. And as long as you, as long as you keep carrying, he'll, you know, it'll still be heavy. But as soon as you give it to him, it's not heavy. So that's how you do it. And here's what happens. You go from the darkness to the light. Now we're using light in two different ways. First of all, we're using it in light and we're using it as in light. But both, get this, both are similar in their renderings of cosmos. 
And what is cosmos? A divine order to things. Oh, man, you didn't get that. So you can wake up on Monday morning, your checklist can be (laughs) way too long because most of our checklists have much more to do than we can possibly do in one day. And we say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm walking in the perfect divine order of my God, of the universe, of the creation of the universe. I'm walking in this divine order. Oh, you're not getting that, church. Man, that's that. I'm just getting lighter thinking about it. I might just float in a second. It's so light because that's what he's asking you to do. Give your burdens to him. Can somebody say amen on this? All right. Number three, anxiety to anticipation. Philippians chapter four, verse six through eight. By the way, anxiety is a feeling of fear. And fear is a spirit. Everybody say fear is a spirit. So here's what Paul said. Do not be anxious about anything. In other words, don't have anxiety. But in every situation, rather, instead of anxiety, say, oh, anxiety. I I, I thought anxiety was just something that's part of the American way. (laughs) It's part of what we're supposed to do as responsible people. No. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And what happens? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds to Christ Jesus. See why it's important to have your CEO meeting every day? Important. Every day you need a CEO meeting. You've, you've got to have that meeting. He orders your day. He orders your steps. And he gives you peace. The things that you've been that have really been troubling. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely, whatever's admirable, if anything's excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Now the key, let's go, action step. Anybody would like to reverse your anxiety? Okay, let's go and reverse it. The the one way you reverse anxiety is through, Paul teaches this in Philippians, is through your tongue. Everybody say tongue or what I say. It is in speaking, right? You speak thanksgiving. You declare your petitions and requests to God. It is a verbalization. And it becomes a verbal a verbalization of anticipation. Biblical hope is a confident anticipation of good. Anxiety is a confident anticipation of bad. <laughs> So biblical hope is I, I'm, I'm anticipating good. Anxiety is I'm anticipating bad. I'm telling you, it's a, that's how it works. That's exactly how it works. And so to reverse it, you have to speak it. I was asked to come, I was asked to come and speak to a football team last week. And uh, so I, I did my thing. I, you know, I got a couple of motivational speeches and that, I, that's kind of my world Outside of church has always been that. Um, I grew up being, I was, went to school to be an athletic coach. You can probably see that when I'm up here sometimes, <laughs> the motivational side coming out. And so I talked to him about several things, talking about what you can have control over, what you can have control over. But the coach had informed me that there's this issue that they're dealing with that's on a, a larger scale. And it involved a word. And the word was curse. And, they're, and, they're, and, and, and I, it, when he told me that, when he asked me to come and speak, when he told me that, right away, I'm like going, oh, man, I got something for you. I have got your answer, okay? Because I know what that is right here. So I talked to the guy, I said, hey, guys, tell me about this curse thing. What is a curse? One kid says, well, it's when bad, bad things happen, blah, blah, blah. Good, 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 good. All good answers. I said, wait a minute. Let me tell you something, one thing about a curse. There's only one way you can reverse a curse. A curse comes because somebody spoke something. They spoke it. And somewhere along the line, another person spoke it, and then another person spoke it, and then people began to believe it. And then what what you believe becomes a reality. Am I right? So I said, here's what we're going to do, guys. We're going to break this curse. And, and I gave him another word, and God gave me this. I looked up what their mascot was, and I found out that their mascot's name means unbroken. 
unbroken. So I said, here guys, I'm going to give you a different word. From now on, you are unbroken. You can't be broken. Even if you win, even if you lose, no matter what, you can never be unbroken. You're a team that can't be broken. Your spirit can't be unbroken. Your will can't be unbroken. Your walk can't be unbroken. No matter what goes on, you are, you are, you cannot be broken. Boy, I'm feeling my pastor stuff coming out right there, man. This is good stuff. I couldn't tell whether they were paying attention to me or not. Who is this old nut that they brought in to speak to us? Well, I'll tell you, I, I texted the coach this morning, how you do it? He said, coach, you won't believe this. He said, we won. He said, you're not going to believe this before they broke their huddle when they put their hands together. Instead of going one, two, three, go. They said, one, two, three, unbroken, yeah. How do you reverse a curse over your life? You begin to speak what you want and not what you've heard. You begin to talk it. You begin to declare it. You begin to thank God for it. You begin to worship God. You begin to praise God over the things that you want. That's how you break a curse. And that's how you live, not in anxiety, but in victory. Number three. Woo. Number four. Did I hit number three? I, here we go. Number four. We're going to... We're getting ready to close, all right? We're getting, I mean, we, I mean, we are sec minutes, uh, hour, no, 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 we're, we are really getting there. Number four, we want to go from empty to full. We don't want to walk around empty. Sometimes our grace tank can get low. Psalm 23, one, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack a few things. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Now, let me go to John chapter seven, verse 38 real quick. Whoever believes in me, John seven thirty-eight. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Rivers. I mean, I mean you, you know, you, you can't be empty and have a river flowing through you, right? By this he meant the, ooh, by this he meant the, Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Here's what, here's what Jesus is saying. Look, every time your grace tank goes low, you've got the Spirit of God to fill you up, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You will never have, you do not have to lack when the Spirit is in, in you. You do not have to be empty. You don't have to be empty. Now, here's how we're going to close. Matter of fact, I think the worship team can join me. That, now, now you know I'm serious, right? How, action step number four. You ready for this? How do I go from empty to full? How many want to know? Anybody want to know? That's not enough. How many want to know? Oh, we're getting closer. How many really, 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 really want to know? All right, here we go. We're going to go... We're going to go from empty to full. Here's what you do it. Here's how you do it. Through praise. Yes. Now, let me tell you why. Because the spirit is in you. Say, everybody say, the spirit is in me. You may not feel like it. You may feel... The spirit, when you became born again, the spirit of God dwells within you. It can lay dormant or it can activate. There are things that can activate the spirit of God inside of you. Did you know that? You can have power and never turn the power on. There's an activation in the spirit realm. Who's ready to activate the spirit inside of you? You ready? It's through praise. It's through praise. I want to show you. I want to show you what praise looked like in the Old Testament and the words. The first word I'm going to give you is toda. Toda means that it's that that Romans 12:1 speaks of it is we become living sacrifices. It's like, okay, I'm empty. You ever been empty spiritually? If empty, try this sometime just going, Lord, I'm yours. 
I'm yours. I surrender to the will of rich clay. I surrender to my will. Not my will, but your will. I'm a, I'm a living sacrifice. God, here I am. Toda. That's praise. Praise. Then there's yada. Yada is simply the lifting of hands. Once again, it's another act of surrender. Matter of fact, just raise your hands right now. All across our campuses. Just raise your hands, okay? Just raise your hands. Now, now just, I want you to do something. I want you to give the Lord that anxiety. Not just the anxiety, but the root of the anxiety. Give him the root of the, what's the root of the anxiety in your life? I'm gonna give it to you, Lord. I'm not hanging on. I'm not clinging. Yeah, Rich Clay's got this. I can handle this. I'm a bootstrapper. I'm a hard worker. No, 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 Lord. I can't. I can't handle this. All right, you can put your hands down. The third is Barack. What is Barack? Man, it's, it's going deeper and deeper and deeper. Lord, I'm a living sacrifice. Here I am, Lord. I give you everything. I don't want to care. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for bearing the burden of my own life. God, I bow before you. I give you my life. I'm gonna tell you what, your tank's gonna start to fill with the spirit. The spirit's gonna start to well up inside of you. <laughs> oh, this next one's gonna rock somebody's boat. This is Shabak. This is a shout. At the lowest points of my life, I've used a shout. Now, I recommend you do this alone. <laughs> so no one thinks you're mad at them. Because you're not really mad at anybody. Except for the devil. Yes. Yes. Shout! Unto God with a voice of triumph. It has a purpose. It's for victory. It's the shout of victory. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I'm tired of this stuff reigning in my life. I'm gonna reign in life. I shout. I, you know, when, when Jesus said, get thee behind me, I don't think he said, get thee behind me. What do you think? You know, I don't want to offend you, but get thee behind me. I think he said, get thee behind me, Satan. He took authority in the name of Jesus. When they marched around Jericho, they shouted and the walls came down. <laughs> There's some walls that need to come down in our lives. Some things that have been keeping us from promises and victories and strategies and opportunities. We got to shout, Shabbat, it's a form of praise. It, 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 it ignites the spirit inside of us. <laughs> Zama. Zama is instruments that express joy. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Mm. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine. We don't have a tambourine, do we? Do we have a tambourine? We got cymbal. Cymbal's coming. You better get ready, Max. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Come on, you Presbyterians. Woo! Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Those fake drums aren't as good as the real thing. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Anybody in here got breath? Anybody in here got breath? Would you stand and give him glory? Stand and give him a shout of victory. Got a couple more. 
Hallel, it's to celebrate and boast. Don't sit down. If you can, if you can stand, stand, okay? If you, if you have to sit, you can sit, but, because I'm almost done, I'm serious, I'm almost done. Sometimes what we need to do is boast and celebrate in the Lord. Look how good the, instead of looking, why did that happen? What this, what? Lord, you're so good. With thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Lord, I thank you for this situation. I thank you for this situation. I have five declarations that I, that I declare every day. I take the five most important things to me and I put, it, I put them in a declaration form and I say, I'm, and the, my first one is, I am healthy, healed, and whole in Jesus' name. And it, yeah, but a, a year and a half, two years ago, when I was in the hospital, with all this stuff going on, and I took my declaration out and I said, I'm, I'm healthy, healed, and whole in the name of Jesus. He said, Pastor, how could you do that? I didn't want to lose my momentum. <laughs> I'm healthy, healed, and whole in the name of Jesus. I'm healthy, healed, and whole in the name of Jesus. I'm healthy, healed. That's just one of my five. Because we have to speak and declare. Halal, boast in the Lord. Last one is Tehillah. Tehillah is where you put them all together. Okay, I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to bless you. Honestly, in 30 seconds, Tehillah is putting them all together. Here's where, it was, here's where it was demonstrated. David, David was victorious. I mean, he would, David, Saul had slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands, right? So David comes back into town and, to celebrate, but he's not like this king coming in going. He comes in, man. They're, they're, they're jamming to the music. I don't want to be offensive or anything, but the Bible says he stripped down to his BVDs. And I ain't doing that. And neither are you. And he's praising and dancing and singing and boasting and declaring and honoring and lifting up. And I don't know what needed to come back in his life, but it came back. He activated the Spirit through praise. In the name of Jesus, Lord, for every person listening to my voice, maybe watching on the internet, they might be in chaos, but you can bring them into order. They might be heavy in their spirit, but you can take the heaviness and give them a spirit of light, of order and peace and direction. They might be dealing with anxiety, but you can take that anxiety Eliminate that condemnation and guilt and bring them into peace. Father, for those that are feeling empty, I pray for the activation of the Spirit, igniting their spirit mm, and filling them. I pray in the name of Jesus right now, anyone and everyone listening to my voice that is hungry for the Spirit of God would be filled Filled, filled, and refilled with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, and all God's people prayed. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise, church. Thanks for watching Crossroads Community Church online. We'd love to hear that you are here today. You can fill out our online connection card with your prayers, praises, and any questions you have at crossroadscn.com connection. Links are also provided in our bio. If you want to stay up to date, check out our website for upcoming events that are happening at your campus. Thanks again for watching. God bless.